these dudes was fighting with two big knives. Yeah. And you know, we we at that time we ain't saying sing, so dudes had uh double O sevens, dudes had yeah. New York right. and dudes had New York knives. Mm -hmm. Like this is not yeah. a game. Yeah. This is really like you got a dude to chase you down with a machete. <laughs> Today, we got the brother, Coleon, Cuba, yeah, in the yeah. building. Yeah, in the building. <laughs> what else? Yeah, happy to be here, happy to be here with some, you know, positive energy, positive brothers, man. Appreciate yeah. it, too. Especially, especially, you know, like, the history that we share, so, you know what I'm saying? So, it's yeah. like, like, it's like an honor, it's like, you know. I was waiting for a long time, man, to, to get to this moment. To bring this, to bring this moment to existence, cause we, when we was behind that wall, it's like everything stops behind that wall. But yet we still preparing though. See, gentlemen like yourself and and I, we know how to prepare. You know what I mean for for this this next life, for this yeah. journey that we yeah. on. Definitely got to be prepared. Absolutely. You definitely, definitely got to come on and be prepared and and, and have a a, a, a goal have plans set, you know what I'm saying? So that way you could come home and execute. Absolutely, that's yeah. right. So first I'd like to start with just just doing a, let's do a run back, man, on where you from, man, How where you grew up, and how how was life when Coleon was that, that young, that young man? The street, the street, the street age, right? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, Absolutely. well. Um, you can share that for us. Yeah, little, of course, you know, I, I'm from the, I'm from the Bronx. I'm from the Bronx, New BX, York. BX, BX, baby. Yeah, I'm from, I'm from the, the Soundview area. I'm from Watson and Boynton, Colgate, the whole area. You know, then I moved out to Yonkers. I moved out to Yonkers when I was when I was um, I was young. I was young when I moved, like in my teenage years. Moved out to Yonkers. Out to Yonkers. Yeah, rep Yonkers yeah. all day long. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Yonkers in the yeah, yeah, the whole, yeah, the yeah. whole Kiss team. Yeah, the whole the whole, the whole LOX. Yeah. Uh, Rough Riders, Rough Double Riders, Riders, Riders in yeah. the building. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I rep all I rep all that. But I, I originally like my teenage years. I grew up in Yonkers. You know, coming coming from the Bronx, I moved to Yonkers with that with that street mentality. So. You know, I was I was I was I was fast, man. I was fast in the streets. I was moving around, um, but my thing always been music. So you know, music in the streets, you know, don't mix. Yeah. And I was and I was in both. You already know. <laughs> I was I was in both. That's I was right. running around in the streets, you know, doing doing the things that you're not supposed to do. But you know, it comes from being in an environment that that's all we know. Mm -hmm. So that's all we you know. We 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 we. we we move from what we see. So if that's what we see, that's what we're going to do. do. You know what I'm saying? So I was moving around, you know, getting money, you know, doing the regular street stuff everybody else do. You know what I'm saying? You know, moving reckless and all that stuff, you know. You know, being in the music business, I jumped in the music business. Um, nine, nine, five, my first, my first introduction. Yeah, I think it was nine, five, nine, four, my first introduction to the music business was um, I rapped for uh, KG. From Naughty by Nature, okay, okay. So I rap, I bumped into him downtown in Papaya, and uh, he gave me his card. Yeah. So once he did that, I knew I had talent. You know what I'm saying? So once he was like, "Yo," he hit me with the card. They took me out to Jersey with his brother. You know what I'm saying? His brother was, you know, that's before they had the they, they record deal and all that. That's before they he had a label. You know, he had Naughty by Nature, but he was just starting his own label. So. He wanted me to be a part of that, but I was too busy, like in the street. So I didn't really, I didn't really like pursue it. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't, cause I was, you know, it, it, I was young. Yeah, yeah, I was young. Absolutely. I was, I was, I was a teenager. So, like the rap thing was just like it's all right, but to me it was the streets. The streets was more luring and and more captivating. So you know, getting a name for yourself was more was more glorifying to me than yeah. than than doing the music thing. So I stuck to that. Then I eventually hooked up with uh, Fat Joe and them in like 97, you know, big pun and all of them, and you know, did my thing with them for a while. We was shopping my deal, did the whole Terror Squad thing, and then I got locked up in 99. Okay. And, you know. But you got locked up for how much time you did? I got locked up for um, a manslaughter mm -hmm. in 99, and I did 20 years. 20, wow. Yeah, I did 20 years. 
So, so I, I got a question, man, because we 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 talking about like here we we basically you know talk about that rehabilitation mm -hmm. and you know those moments. So I I want to first by I want to first ask like what was that like receiving that much time, man, and realizing like wow I got to do this time now. What was that like? How that what was that emotional feeling like for yourself? I was I was um I was numb. I was numb. It wasn't. It was. It was like I had to set my mindset like, damn, I got to do this. Yeah. You know, always hoping for an appeal. Like you don't really know. Like when you when you first when you first get your time, you think, all right, you know, pray to God, I'm gonna get an appeal. Mm -hmm. I'll be home in like four or five, not knowing how the appeal process works and not knowing what it, what it you know what it consists of. So you know, in the beginning, I was numb and I was just like, you know, all right, I I I got to. I got to take myself away from that street element, and I got to jail. Mm -hmm. I got to transform mm -hmm. into something different. You know what I'm saying? In, in, in order to survive what, what I'm getting ready to go through, I can't be the same person that I was in the, in the outside. This is a whole different world we're talking about. Mm -hmm. So right. I had to I had to really, you know, change change my whole everything. Everything is just like it, I became a whole different person. You know what I mean? So. Yeah. At what point, at what point, because that, that's the transformation, right? Not too many people are blessed with that gift where you come to that crossroad and you say, you know what, like, man, I got some potential. I got to do this, but I really want to be this person here. And I'm going to get to that person because that's who I'm destined to be. And no matter how hard it is or how bleak it may seem, like, I know that's my true North Star right there. Right. Like, when did that hit you, like? Early. <laughs> it hit me early. It hit me early because I had got a cop out. So now I could have came home. You know, I, I caught my case at 23. I could have been home early, like early tw not not like my late 20s. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But I'm thinking. I'm, I'm I'm not thinking about the particulars of the case. I'm not thinking about nothing. I'm thinking about damn. I'm not coming home to be no old ass trapper. Yeah. That's my whole mindset. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? I'm thinking about everything that 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 I was getting ready to lose. Mm -hmm. You know, as opposed to everything that all right, let me do this and then come home and then I wasn't even thinking about that. I was thinking about everything that I was getting ready to lose. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to lose that. I didn't want to be disconnected from that. Yeah. So I was not really paying attention to my trial. I was not paying attention to certain things, certain particulars of the case and all that other stuff. So it hit me. It, like it hit me like damn, like I know I'm supposed to be here, but I'm facing this. What was it like that first night in prison? Like, growing up, I know, in the streets in New York, you know what I mean? We grow up, we, we in and out, system, whatever. But shit get real when you sit in front of that judge and you yeah. smack that gavel down, yeah. and you know that shit is real. Ain't no take back. You have to now go through the process. And I think for, for us young individuals, right, from the city, we come from the certain demographic, and this mentality, and that's always been freaking mentality. Oh, I'll come back on appeal. What, 50 years? All right, whatever, I'll be back on appeal. 20 years? All right, I'll be back on appeal, right? Not really knowing that to get that appeal, you're dependent on somebody you didn't pay, or you have to go put in some work and go to the law library, right? Every day, and then you end it, and you run up to your man, and then it's like, I'm going to the yard, let me go smoke some weed, let me go do this, and then that appeal, and those times start passing, and start passing, and that reality sets in, and you're like, holy shit. What the fuck happened in the last five fucking years? Yeah, five, ten years. Yeah, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah, five, ten years is shoot by. That first day, that uh, first day. Uh, what was that for you? What was that mindset? The, the, first, the, the first day, I looked up, I'm in the cell, and I'm looking up. Like, this is not even, not even like the county or or, or that was in my house. My first, my first night up north, and I'm just looking up at these walls, and I'm like, like this is my life for the... For the, for the next 20 years, you know what I'm saying? And I'm like, damn, I, it's crazy because you 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 really looking forward to an appeal, but you don't know how this shit work. Mm -hmm. Can I curse? I mean, I yeah, yeah, you, oh, yeah, all right, yeah, all right, yeah, all right. Yeah. Yeah. So you don't, you don't really know how, because everybody look forward to that. Everybody look, look, look forward to an appeal, but they don't know how it works. You could have the same exact case as somebody else that went home. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're not going to get that. Because, mm -hmm. it, you know, it's politics, man, when it, when it comes... To the courts, man. People don't understand that 
if they open the door for you, they got to open the door for everybody else that has the same exact issue. They're not going to do that. Right. They're going to pick and choose who they do it to. They're going to pick and choose what cases they let. It's, it's a numbers game with these people. Yeah, absolutely. You know absolutely. what I'm saying? It's a numbers game, and you could have the you could be dead right. I got them. I'm going home. That's right. And you get shot down. You be like, yo, what happened? What did I do wrong? Or what did my lawyer do wrong? Or what happened in my case that it's a numbers game? This this is politics. You know, we got to understand. Like, you know, you you fall back and you start thinking. You start looking at things. It's deeper than us. You know what I'm saying? Everything that goes on is deeper than us, beyond us, and beyond what we know. So I, I, I want to know what was that moment for you, like? Um, that transition, that that taking that self introspection moment for yourself, and knowing you had to grow up in there, and knowing that you had to, you know what I'm saying? Transition into this manhood now. Funny, well, it's the funny, the funniest story, right? We lock out, we go to child, so we all, everybody lined up, go to child. This is insane, you know. So we all up in the max. We all go on the child, one line, we in B block, going to child. Happen to be walking. Right before we get to the mag, the dude turns around and says, yo, you too close to me. And I look, and I'm like, you know what, he's right. I got to start moving with these rules. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't know if homie got a banger, be dirty. I could ring and set him off. So, you know, you got to start, you got to start thinking for you. You got to start thinking Absolutely. for the next man. Yeah. And you got to start learning how to live with jail rules and jail, you know, like everybody, it, the, 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 the rules in prison are different. So you got to learn how to, how to abide by those rules. As long as you abide by the rules in prison, you, you good, you good, but you have to learn what those rules are. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You got, and you got to learn them quick. You can't, you can't wait years down the line. Because it could be a little bit too late, man. Something could happen to you. So you really got to learn early and learn to adapt to that system of living and knowing, you know, the the, the, the respect that everybody has is different than, than the street. And we're not talking about the, the, the handbook rule that they give you. We're talking about the real, the real rules yeah. that's within the wall. Yeah. That's the silent, unwritten rules on how to move and conduct yourself. <laughs> In that type of population, yeah, it's different rules. Because if you don't, yeah. you get dealt with. Yeah, you get dealt accordingly. With. Absolutely. Oh, yeah, you and get it's, dealt it's, with. It's, you know, just moving on to my next question, then, you know, having to go through that experience, so being on that line and being too close and learning those rules that we we all have in there, those prison rules with each other. Um, like just coming up when we all first come up, I I remember I was sent right to Clinton, like straight from. Straight from the county where I was at, selling drugs, you know, doing what I was doing, since straight, straight to Clinton. They, we used to call it Gladiator School mm -hmm. back in, in 90, 94. And, uh, and there was a lot of things i seen, you know what I mean, that I speak about. I want to know, like, for you, coming up in that space where you were, that first prison, what was, like, that worst thing that you seen amongst population, prisoners? That you you know that you seen that that may have took you aback like wow this is where we at now yeah a couple of um a couple of bodies dropped that year mm -hmm. you know you got you got dudes that got that got um you had a dude that got had a gunfight in the flats with somebody else and one of them ended up dying got stabbed like about like thirty eight times mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying they shut the whole jail down so. I'm like, yeah, this is this is this is this is it. Like, you know, yeah. you got you got to you got to you got to you got to conform, yeah, homie. That's right. <laughs> you got to conform and you got to live by these rules because, you know, you never know when no matter you don't know what that was about, you know what I'm saying? But yeah. you know that it could happen. It could happen. That's right. It could happen. So you just got to be aware and wait. <laughs> no. You got you got to know that anything anything is capable of happening in in the prison system, especially with um you know, because everybody, everybody, I'm not saying everybody's against you, but you got the you got the police and then you got your opposition in jail. You got people that don't like you for a certain reason or whatever the case may be. So you gotta know you gotta know how to walk accordingly, man. There's rules to everything. So you, you gotta do everything, you know, be right. Unless you wanna be outside and doing, 
you know, doing dumb shit and going to the box here and there. I didn't want to live my life like that in prison. Yeah. You know, that's an easy thing to do. Mm-hmm. You know, go to box, the box, the box, the box. I, I, no, I didn't want to do that. You have to clarify for all those out there when he said a gunfight, he means two individuals fighting with knives. With knives. That's what we call guns inside the prison system. Exactly. Them bangers. Um, or them tate quietos. Yeah, yeah. Right? yeah. They'll slow your ass down real fast. Yeah, these dudes. <laughs> these, these, yeah, these dudes. These dudes. These dudes are fighting with two big knives. Yeah. And, you know, we, we at, at that time, we didn't sing sing, so. Dudes had uh, 007s, dudes had yeah. <laughs> New York, right. dudes had New York knives. Mm-hmm. Like, this is not yeah. a game. Yeah. This is really like you got a dude chase you down with a machete yeah. or, or, or a big ass ice pick or something made from, from cause the, you know, the, the railroad is right there. A little pick from the railroad is everything, man. So you got you to gotta be careful of everything that you do, everything that you say. You know, you got to conform to the, to the jail life, man. So so when was that time when you actually, you know, went through that transition and were preparing for your release? You know, talk about that a little. You know what I mean? How how that felt and did you do any prep preparing? Cuz you know a lot of us we 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 come home and we ain't got it together. You know what I mean? And that I I believe that's due to us, you know, not uh that prep that lack of preparation prior to coming home. Right. So talk about that in your in your life in your space. I I mean I had, I had the mentality the mentality I was I was prepping early because I, I had I had a good um I had a good support system mm. you know I had my brother my moms and my dad coming through and I had a couple of other dudes coming through but it was really when I got to a medium when I got to a medium I was like all right this is the plan I'm gonna come home that's what I'm gonna do. You know, like even Esco will tell you, Esco will tell you, like, I used to tell Esco, like, yo, I'm dumb, nice, and rhyming, and this and this and that. He's like, get out of here. I used to be like, yo, Esco, for real, man. Like, I used to shut Sing Sing down. Like, can't nobody rap after me in Sing Sing. Right, right, right. You know what I'm saying? What I'm saying? Right. Nobody. Dudes used to want me to rap with in they set because they used to get booed. I used to be like, nah, you ain't taking my little glory. Yeah, yeah, I, they yeah, want yeah, me yeah, at the yeah, end. Yeah. I'm going to shut it down and I'm going to do what I do. I, but I started I started prepping I started prepping like when I got to a medium I got I got to a medium with like I think it was like three years left and I really started like I right, this is what I'm gonna do this is my game plan yeah. I'm gonna I'm I'm go home and execute this you know what I'm saying Absolutely. I'm gonna I'm go home and execute you know and hopefully the, the same people that, that that's been there for me they're on the same the, the same vision same you know what I'm saying and we get it going yeah what, was, what was that like that what was the, the emotional charge in you that day you was released? <laughs> you no, know what I cried. Mean? I cried that yeah. day. I nice. cried. I, nice. I, I ain't gonna lie. That 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 day, um, because from the state, I had I had went to um, immigration, so they sent me to Batavia. I was in Batavia. That's the worst time that you could ever spend in prison. Hmm. The worst is a federal is a federal uh, spot. Holding spot. So I'm within Buffalo. You don't never know when you're going home from there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You don't. Yeah. You don't. Have, it's no date. Yeah. So you just sitting there. There was like, yo, I think you're going home. So I called. I went to call my house. The phone was blocked. So my account was froze. I said, I'm going home. I went in my. I ain't telling nobody. I went in my cell and I got on my knees and I cried. I was like, yo, it's yes. over. Yes. I remember I when cried. they sent you there, man. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, bro, we hope we kill all right. Man. Yeah, yeah. I, yo, I, I cried. I got on my knees and I cried. I Because, you know, there's bunk beds in there. So I, I got on. I was like, yo, it's over. Because I couldn't believe it after doing all that time. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? You go, on, you go on outside trips and all that, and you shackled, and you looking at the cars, uh-huh. and you looking at the outside yeah, world yes. like, damn, I wish they just dropped me off right here. Yeah. I, I, I would walk. Always. I would walk from... Like the little simple walk, things we take for fucking granted. Yeah, I, I'd be like, yo, I'll walk from, from Attica. I would walk yeah. from Attica <laughs> to the Bronx. Yeah. If they let me out yeah. right now. I won't uh-huh. take no cab, no nothing. Yeah, yeah. So that day they let me out, I was like, I cried, man. I was like, you know, That's they real shit. threw me in a van and they dropped me off in a gas station to wait for that bus. And I, I'm feeling lost because I'm like, <laughs> got a pocket full of money. Yeah. I went and bought all the chicken wings in the spot. I was like, yeah, you going to eat all that? Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, all that. Time too, I mean, one. all that. Give me the big Slurpee and everything you got there. Give me everything while I'm waiting for this bus. You know what I'm saying? It was, it was the greatest the greatest feeling on earth next to having a kid. Mm-hmm. Oh, 
what I'm saying? It's nothing like that, B. Nothing like being released after all that time, after after all that pain and, you know, because, you know, we do suffer emotionally and mentally while we're in there. We just don't show it. That's right. Because we men, we taught not to show emotion. Mm -hmm. But emotion is a natural thing, man. That's right. If we built with emotion, why you can't show it? You understand what I'm saying? They tell you that because we men. But that's something that's built in us because we human. Who, who, who's to say to take that out of you? So, you know, that was a very emotional, yeah. emotional thing for me, man. And I know a lot of people that came home that did a lot of time. I'm not, you know, maybe a couple of people that, that did little bids here, they felt that. But if you did a long stretch, and that day you walked out that gate, man, it felt like, it's, it's unbelievable. Yo, it, you can't, you can't, yes, yeah, it's, it's yeah, indescribable, it's, brother. It's indescribable. I can't. You want to have to experience what that's like to, to know. And I think we can all attest that, you know, we all, yeah. we all been there. And it's like, it's just indescribable. It's indescribable. Worse. There's no really feeling. Indescribable. You know? and, yeah. and I get it, you know, because I, I know, like, for my last bid, I just came home five years ago from the feds. Congrats, man. And I had to go to the state after the feds. Like, my last bid with everything was backwards. Like, you know how you go through, you get arrested, go to go to court, go to county, yeah. then go up north or whatever. My last bid in Florida was straight to the feds, turn myself into the feds, from the feds to the state, from the state to the county. Then get released. And then get released. Mm -hmm. And it was like, you know, when I got to that, when you're in the feds, when you're getting released, they literally release you like you're going home. And I for, almost forgot that I had a hold on me that I had to go to the state. And man, for like that split second, just walking through this door to that door, I was like, I felt a little sense of relief. And I was like, and then I looked and I was like, oh, fuck. Then I get to the state when I get released again and just came home. Like, I think I was just crying like a little baby. And my wife was looking at me and she's like, like, I'm like you won't even understand. Like it's just go in the car. Like yeah. like and because like you know you leave all that shit behind. Yeah. That feeling, that emotion, the shit that we always took for granted. You know, and I'm saying to myself every fucking time, man. Like 22 years of my life in and out of this motherfucker here. And, like it took this last five years for it to hit me to say, yo, like listen, take all that energy, man, that you don't put into the street, and you gotta turn that thing into something positive. Yeah. You know, and so my question to you, with that being said, did you believe that you'll be where you at today in life after being released in such a short time from doing such a long time? Absolutely. Purpose. Absolutely. That's uh, it, purpose. It wasn't, it wasn't no doubt. I mean, I, I would have thought that I would have been further. But, you know, when I talk to people, they be like, yo, what are you, crazy? Look, yeah, look at everything right. that you accomplished, you know, like, like you, you bugging, like, you want everything right then. I'm like, no, I'm going to get that. Yeah. <laughs> Don't tell me what I can't do or what I, what I should, because I know my capabilities and everything and how I move. But I, I, I knew that I was going to be where, where in, 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 a, in a certain You're space. You're going to get, get yeah, what yeah, that was, it, was, it, was, it was no doubt in my mind. Definitely. I didn't, I didn't have a doubt. That's right. I didn't have a doubt in my mind that, that I was going to be, yeah. you know, executing my plans and, and being where I, where I want to be at in, in such a short period of time. Let me ask you quick, real quick. Do you believe in a vision board? Yeah, of course. The vision yeah, board? of course. I talk about vision boards all the time. Of course. And, and I find that, like, when I talk to people and I, and I tell them I said, the hardest thing that I had to do when I was in prison is put positive affirmations on my scratched up mirror inside myself about myself because I was always told that lie that I'm a gangster, I'm a tough guy, I'm a badass, I'm a motherfucker, I'm all this stuff, right? So I had to retrain my mind to see myself how I wanted to live, that I'm positive, that I'm smart, that I'm funny, that I'm fucking all this witty crazy shit. And my cellmate used to always laugh at me like, yo, why I got to wake up every morning and look at this shit? I go, it's better than looking at a scratched up mirror and looking at your ugly ass motherfucking face, right? And believing in yourself and really not letting no one take that from you. Because I always say, man, the best investment that you can make in life is the investment in yourself. If you truly believe in yourself, there's nothing that can't stop you. No matter what your background is, no matter what you've done, no matter where you've been in life. If it's yours and you believe in it and you can freaking visualize it, you can materialize it, you can bring it through. But it ain't going to come easy. Absolutely. Ain't gonna come easy. So yeah. you prepare yeah. to 
spend those night those those nights and weekends and the, you exhausted and you just like want to throw in the towel and you just like but you know I'm, I'm gonna say one thing right being that we've been through what we've been through right everything else is easy mm-hmm. to me I can't speak for everybody else That's because true. I don't I don't I don't been through through I, like I, I was knocking I was knocking on hell's door. Mm-hmm. Like this is this is this is this is the closest thing to death that there is yeah. is being in prison. Mm-hmm. So everything that come after that is easy. It's simple. You just gotta apply yourself and just just move. That's right. You understand what I'm saying? Like it's, it's, and that's it, what people need to hear because that's the truth. If people don't do that, we take those things for granted. Those little things like that for granted when we're talking about moving our life in the direction that we want it to and not let it be shifted by the surroundings that we in like a freaking piece of paper in a wave. Mm-hmm. And that and that goes that goes that goes to that goes to um the people that you're around with too. Because if you're around people that that's that's negative and that don't believe in you and don't believe in nothing that's going on, like you need to you need to change the environment. You need to change the people that you're around. Like I hung around, I hung around, I hung around with people that 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 that's gonna inspire you or believe in the same thing you do or oh believe in me. We always have, and we I was, always had that. I was, I was we always had that same mentality. So I hung out with people that wanted more more for for everybody. You know, we all wanted the same thing. We all wanted the same the same My goals. Backbiters. Yeah, now nah, we I, I, I can't I can't be around negative people that drag Sorry. you down because that stuff that stuff is contagious. They be around you every day. That stuff starts to wear you down every day. So I hung around with dudes that you know we joke, we laugh, but we want more. Like what we gonna do? Like what's our plan? That's right. What we gonna do? We gonna we gonna come out here. We gonna make some noise. We gonna we gonna change society. Absolutely. Society's gonna know what Absolutely. that yeah, we done did what, this time. But that's right. we try to tell people that all the time. People go, man, you don't hang out too many people. You don't have man. I said, listen, man, the way that I choose my friend is that they gonna need to inspire me, uplift me, motivate me, and believe me to push me when I feel like I don't want to do that no more. Yeah. Those are my friends. I got a lot of associates, people that I grew up with, still stuck at where they at in life. You know what I mean? But I need to surround myself with people that's going to be like, yo, bro, you could do that. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? Show me by some examples. I tell people all the time, listen, I know how to commit crimes. I know how to go to jail. I know how to get high. I know how to be a fuck up, right? What I really don't know how to do these days is really be a father because I'm still learning how to do that now with a 29-year-old, a 27-year-old, an 11-year-old, right? Because I'm so used to not having a father in my life that that's hard. Yeah. Teach me how to do that. Show me how to sit there and, and, and spend some quality time with my kid and help him in some type area, right? Teach me how to really push myself when I feel like it's giving up. Absolutely. Yeah. I don't need that negativity shit. I don't want to hear that yo man I'm tired working paycheck to paycheck. Oh man, fucking life sucks. Now listen, by all means, listen. I I just can't. That's too much negative energy in my yeah, life. You know, yeah. Putting the work in. So yo, you know, you know I'm I'm gonna tell you a funny story, right? And this is in in, in the prison yard. You know, I know I I knew everybody. You know, gang banger, everybody. Mm-hmm. So a lot of a lot of my mans and them, you know, they had they had the court. And they, you know, they they be into other things that you know I wasn't into, but those is my man's. Right. So, I still, you know, we still embrace each other, whatever. And um, one day my man pulled me over. He was like, "Yo, man, why you hanging with that nigga? That nigga's a square. He's a lemon." Mm-hmm. And I looked at him and I said, "You know why? Because he got no beef in the yard." Mm. So when I walk with him, I ain't got to worry about no nigga coming <laughs> to stab me in the back. Yeah. Yeah. I hang with you, I got to look all over the place and be with a knife like this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but when I'm with that nigga, I got no worries. I can let my guards down. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 And that's what, that's what we all really want in life. With exactly. Them. You know what I mean? Like, we don't want to be watching man. our back. So want, want all that. So you really want you, so you want to invite people like that into your life to balance because you know everything everything is a balance absolutely you know you got good with the bad so you got to balance everything out you can't just have everything that's negative without positive you got to have a lot of positive and like you know like the brother that i was hanging out with he bought a lot of positive introduced me to a lot of things with the music and sing sing and i was like i was taking like from i went from here to here yeah night and day right i'm saying i was Mm -hmm. doing positive things and and i and i seen myself growing Mm -hmm. i was like oh okay but they seen that too. But they respected. Right. They respected because they knew my 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 caliber. They knew they knew who I was. So 
they, they respect it. No. You got to respect it. If you if you down with me, mm-hmm. you're going to respect That's it. That's right. You know what I'm saying? If you for me, you're going to respect it. Just like I respect anything for you unless it's something that I see that's dragging you down the hole and I'm going to be like, yo, yeah. just get up. Get up out of this. All right. Yeah, but we right. all still respect each other, mm-hmm. and we all help each other out. That's that's, so, that's the thing. How did you go about obtaining that success after release? Like what you doing? Talk about what you doing now. You know what I mean? And how you you on that 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 music on that on that movement that, that, yeah, in that yeah. movement on that journey yeah. that you want to talk a little bit about, about that. That, for that was that was that was part. Yeah, you see, Jay, yeah, right? yeah. But that that was part. That was part of that was part of that was part of the plan. Because um, I was in the music when when I had a, I had a record deal when everybody couldn't get a record deal. I had a record deal when you had to have talent back then. So I said, you know, when I come home, I wasn't gonna pursue it at first. But then everybody was like, now you can't let your talent. You gotta let the world see your talent. You you're, you're too talented. You're too nice. So I pursued it. I pursued it. Mm-hmm. I stepped on the gas. I didn't ask you know nobody for no help. I had to figure everything out on my own. Right. I made mistakes. Mm-hmm. You know, I came through, made made a lot of mistakes. I said, All right, I'm not doing that no more. I'm gonna do this, doing, doing. and everything's been working out. You know what I'm saying? I, I, you gotta figure it out on your own because nobody's gonna teach you the ropes, so especially out here in a society that everybody's for themselves. You have a few brothers that are good, that are that are that are willing to teach and reach back and, and, and help people out. But the majority, ain't nobody gonna help you out. Ain't nobody gonna do nothing for you. You gotta figure it out yourself. So you gotta put your pants on, you gotta mm-hmm. tighten up that belt and go out there and figure it out. That's right. You gotta figure that thing out. Once you figure it out, who's gonna stop you? Mm-hmm. Who? Type of dog. As long as you roll with God, now who's gonna stop you, bro? That's right. <laughs> that 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 is a fact. And you know, just to clarify, I don't look at them as mistakes. They learn experiences. Right, right. You know what I mean? I tell people Little all the time. Because, bruises, yeah. yeah, you know what I mean? Because people get stuck on those or mistakes or failures. And I go, yeah, ain't no failures. Just learning experiences. Yeah. Right? But and I and I and I stand by them and I tell people all the time, yo, no one's gonna believe in you more than you believe in yourself. Right. The best investment that you gonna make is in yourself. You know, since I came home Eric came home, like, this is my childhood friend. Like, we ran the streets as a little kid. He gave me my first pack to go out of town with. Right? And, like, 20, almost 30 years later, we reunited. He calls me, and nobody would ever thought to think that I'll be where I'm at in my life and what I'm doing in my life today. But everybody kept telling me, yo. We're not supposed to be here, man. At all. Yo, you, you, you'll you never be able to do this because of your criminal background. You'll never be able to buy a house here because of your criminal background. You'll never be able to own a successful business because of your background. And I showed everybody. Yeah. I never listened to that. I, I take that shit and I be like, yeah, thank you. I never, I yeah. never, I never, I never, I never paid attention to the word can't. I, I I even I even excluded that word from my vocabulary. Absolutely, you, I don't I don't use that word. Can't as, as you should, as everyone should, right? But we use it, and I think some of our mentalities don't change. That it's easier it's easier for some people to accept that word in their vocabulary yeah. to stay stagnant. Well, that's a big to stay part doing of the dumb shit in their life. Yeah. Nigga, that's easy. That's a big part of our success. Yeah. Your success, his success is and that, you're, you're, is you're that you eradicate that from their vocabulary. You, you, yeah. you, I, I leave them once they start thinking yeah. and start talking. That okay, that's on you. Like, yes, I, don't, yes. I don't feel the same way. I mean, you. I respect everybody's opinion. That's the whole thing. Everybody's entitled to their opinion. I don't have to agree with you, and I don't agree with you. <laughs> yeah. bottom, 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 bottom line. Plain and simple. I don't agree with you. It's not going to mess up my day if I don't agree with you. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, you have, you have dudes that, that, that be on the internet, and they look at, they, they'll put up a post, and then they look for every negative thing under it. I don't even look at the, I don't even look at nothing. <laughs> for what? I gave yeah, you a so tell me on the time. Yeah, you, you, yeah, you never respond. You never respond. You never respond. I go. I'm That's just right. posting whether you like it or you don't. Ain't my business. I'm not here to spark a conversation. Absolutely. I'm just putting it out there. Either you take it or you don't. Shy away from negativity, yeah. man. Negative comments. Right. I shy away from that type of energy. 
So I deal I deal with people that that that's that's gonna uplift each other and and, and help each other grow. That's all it is, man. I stay away from everything that's negative. Exclude me from that. And what advice would you have for them? You know, just on how to get their life straight when they come out here upon their release. And this is what I tell everybody when they come home. Don't expect nothing from nobody. Do what you got to do. Very Find good. your way, man, because there's opportunity. Don't don't follow the leader. Don't think because he's successful in this field that you're going to be successful in that. That's not. That's just happening because he's good at that. Find life. something that you're good at and go forward, man. But don't expect nobody to help you on nothing. Don't expect nothing from nobody. The, the, the less you expect, the more you're going to get up with, mm. with ambition yeah. to do it for yourself. Very important. So it doesn't matter. Like you said, you get, you get bumps and bruises. Mm -hmm. You learn from that. You learn from the bumps and bruises. Yeah, so you, you're gonna learn, and you're gonna you're gonna figure it out. Don't expect nobody to do anything, anything for you, man. Expectations just gonna Expect, let yeah. you down. Yeah, people, you know, pe don't. people, you know, like you know, we come home, and a lot of people's uh, families are still there, and, and which is which is a great thing. But you also gotta understand that people people get tired of holding somebody down twenty something years, man. Mm -hmm. That's 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 like a boulder that they carrying, man. Make it easy on them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Make yeah. it easy on them. Do something for yourself. Very important. Then you're able to give it's back important. to them, and then you be like, yo, look. You know how they gonna look at you? Mm -hmm. After all the years that I'm holding you down, know, you go back and give something to them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Like it's it's, it's 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 something that. But everybody gotta want that. Yeah. You just you just yeah. can't. You gotta that's want it. that. You can, it, it depends on the individual and, and how you built. Absolutely. And you know that's 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 I, I tell everybody don't expect nothing from nobody. Go out there and get it. Cause there's opportunity. There's mad jobs out here. You start off. You start off with the small. Everything is a stepping stone. Mm -hmm. It don't matter if a job is paying you sixteen, fifteen dollars an hour. Do that for a year. Then you're gonna find something that pays twenty one. That's right. Do that for two years. Then you're gonna find something that pays twenty seven, twenty eight. Then you're gonna learn so many different fields that you're gonna be like, yo, I'm making I'm making forty dollars an hour. Yeah. And, and and you like, damn, look where I just came from. That's right. Yeah, but the thing is, most people don't change their mentality. Everybody wants to go up here. Everybody wants the big car, the big house, and all that. But don't nobody want to start down here to get it. They feel like the world owes it to them. To put that work but, in. Oh yeah, I, I done but, did you know twenty five years. I was in the streets. I was the man, and I come home and yeah. no, no, but no, that's not how it goes. Get humble. Slow down so you can appreciate that shit. Because how much did we ever appreciate when we was out there in the street? When people that when they came, when they when they came like easy, it was nothing like you know, do handing you a bag of money because he don't flip the pack. And you go out there and you go buy a new car and you crash it. Like all right, whatever, right? Go go get some new sneakers, some Jordans. Don't get scuffed up. That don't worry, I'm not worrying them. I'm gonna get a new pair. Right? But when you work hard and you put that blood, sweat, and tears, and you gotta wake up early in the morning, yeah. right? When you don't want to get up and you gotta go and show up. I right? ain't shut up, and then you get that paycheck, and you like, oh, but you appreciate it more. Everybody's not deserving of everything, though. You know what I'm saying? So if if that's your mentality, and you deserve what you got, bingo. So, bingo. so bingo. you gotta you gotta you gotta set yourself apart. You gotta ask yourself, am, am I one of them, or am I am I gonna be the one that's going out there and get it? <laughs> yeah. You gotta separate yourself early, man, before you get you before you come home. Yeah. And, and realize what, what what you're getting ready to get into. So, you know, everybody is not deserving of everything. Like, I always, I you know, I tell people, like, everybody don't deserve to have money. Right. Because I done been with people that got 500000 to spend it in, 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 in four months. Mm -hmm. you, don't, you don't deserve to have money. Because you're going to keep doing, you're going to keep doing that same thing. Like, you don't deserve to have no money. Everybody doesn't deserve to have money. Then you get people that get... Hundred thousand and put it towards their family, mm -hmm. you know, give back to the community. Everybody is not deserving of everything, man. Yeah, you got different, different, different uh, 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 calibers of people. So if everybody, if everybody was equal, 
be ready it, not to it, be, it, 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 it wouldn't be nothing to talk yeah, about. Right, it just, it just, it wouldn't be no podcast. It wouldn't be no yeah, television because everybody, we all be running around box. like robotic. Like yeah, yeah, everybody, everybody be running around in in, in, in uh, Teslas and all that other stuff. So yeah. it, everybody, it's not for everybody to be equal, but you have to set yourself apart. You have to set yourself apart. That's that's the that's the most important that's thing. Important thing. Yeah. I just would like to hear your perspective on snitching. You know what I mean? When mm-hmm. I look at this big crew, this, these young kids that just got locked up, young and, gun and all, and all of them six, nine, snitching. What's your how you how you view that? A lot of these dudes ain't really street, mm-hmm. so they're gonna cool. snitch. A lot of these dudes they they in the street. They not really street. A lot of these dudes come from from good parents, and they just choose the wrong thing. So it's gonna happen. You know, it's, it's up it's up it's up to it's up to the person that's really in the streets that that tech these dudes. And like like this is not and tell them yo this ain't for you. Cause I don't think you, you could take what's coming with this thing. Yes, yeah, you gotta let them know ahead of time. Like yo, this is serious. Mm-hmm. A lot of dudes is not ready for a lot of dudes is not street and a lot of dudes don't have the same morals that we grew up with. You have a few dudes that have the same morals, but a lot of dudes don't. A lot of dudes ain't, they, ain't, they ain't grow up the same way. Like this, they ain't grow up the same way. You know the same mentality. You know they they get on rap and uh, they tell them each other and all this other stuff. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, yeah, that's. That's it in a nutshell. Right uh, it's, 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 everybody's not street. Just because you're in the street don't mean you're a street dude. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. You got to recognize that, man. Everybody that's around you could be in the street hustling. How many how many times we was in the street hustling and there was mad people around us, but they went back home and, and to their mother and their father. Mm-hmm. That's right. When they got thick. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> you know, we was left out there to handle what we has got to handle. Mm-hmm. And then it was also our job to be like, you're not, you're not built for this. Go home. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, and we lose that. Yeah. We got to start doing that. We got to we got to start policing ourselves when it comes to these streets. We got to start telling these dudes now. Nah, you're not built for this, homie. Go yeah, home, go man. home. Yeah, because they didn't hear there. A lot of this them is don't hear that. Don't listen to these dummies telling you Tell, they yeah. run around jail doing this and that because these niggas that's out here tough, they soft in jail. Mm-hmm. A lot of these dudes ain't locking out. They ain't going to the yard. None they getting the commissary taken from them, and they got three bodies in outside here. Yeah. Run around shooting everything, but when they get in there, they can't. They can't do nothing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So please don't go home. Yeah, go home. That's go right. Home. That that was that, with that being well, said, right? I, I want him to plug in. It's that's music. right. I want you what to you, tell me what's tell, next. Tell him plug, what's, what's next? Yeah, yeah. Music. Like man. you know what I'm saying? Like tell him what, what what's going on because I'm excited. <laughs> I, 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 I'm about to just pump out Coley on music. When I get back down to Florida, I do that already. Yeah, 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 yeah. He stay, he beast, he beast. Stay hitting me up. He stay hitting me up. He like, yo, this is crazy. Yo, you know, I got, I got, a, I got a bunch, I got a bunch of, I got a bunch of music on 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 uh, YouTube, Instagram. Um, you gotta go to my Instagram, K O R L E O N M U Z I K. You got a lot of Coleons out there. But if you if you know if you don't spell it the way I just it's just one one name K O R L E O N M U Z I K that's for YouTube and that's for Instagram you go there check out the music you go check it on Apple Music Spotify and you go it's gonna pop right up you're gonna see all the all the bangers you know please leave some comments on there let me know what you're feeling. Let Absolutely. me know what you're not. Let me know what you're thinking. You know, hopefully you like my music. Hopefully I can touch you, you know, with everything that I'm talking about. And, you know, I got some gritty stuff there that's very ignorant, but I also got a lot of positive things yeah, on yeah, there, too. Yeah. A lot of positive things. Yeah. Uh, and you know, with I that. I appreciate you, man. Yeah. I appreciate yeah. you, man. You know, yeah. 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 Hold up, hold up. I just want to say one thing before I leave. Yeah. One thing, I just want to say one thing before I leave. Yeah. I am the best performer in Sing Sing history. Absolutely. Nobody and has tore that stage down yeah. like me. Uh, Nobody. And I yeah. wish somebody would come on. Yeah, I wish somebody like would debate so. that. <laughs> let, let, yeah, let's go. I wish somebody would debate that. I might have that. him come, come, back. Yeah. Have yeah. come back on another part and do it again. Yeah, yeah, uh, we can debate uh, that. Uh, Nobody. Really and I done been, and, and, and everybody's been through that. Everybody's been on the internet 
been through there. That's right. They can't, so, yeah. For real, all those out there, know. man, listening, thank you for supporting Success After Lockdown, man. We just two brothers, man, trying to change the stigma on how people for, uh, um, view formerly incarcerated men and women. You know what I mean? We all have a past, but we also have a future to set the right tone. And Give it a chance. Our past dictate our future. You know right, what I'm saying? Right. Bottom line. Peace and no excuses to achieve anything in life. Either you get it or you don't. Yo, follow us, man. Huh? Follow oh, that's us. right. Follow us on um, Success After Lockdown YouTube. You can follow us on Apple Podcasts, on Spotify, Spotify Anchor. On Anchor. Uh, you hit us on uh, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook. If you want to drop something, if you know somebody that may be a good fit for this show, please hit us up at successafterlockdown at, gmail. at gmail.com. Com.